Hey everyone, welcome to that extra special show I indicated we were having today. We are bringing on a trendsetter, a visionary, and a best-selling author who is frankly an unstoppable force of positivity, Elena Cardone. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you for that intro. It was nice. Thank you. Oh, you're, you're very welcome. And uh, I mean that. Uh, everything you put out there is positivity. You're helping. You truly care. Uh, and really what I wanted to talk about today is your book, Build an Empire, How to Have It All. Uh, I think it's, I mean, you almost couldn't have planned it any better. I mean, the timing for the book with what we're all going for, shelter in place, it's really causing all of us to kind of question maybe what we believe with the 40-40 life, right? Work 40 years, uh, 40 hours a week. Um, you know, I just, I want to talk about the book, kind of maybe start with what, what, what inspired you to write it? Because writing a book is not easy. No, it was one of the most difficult things I've had to confront. I don't like sitting st still. I was not good in school. So um, it took a lot of confront. You're right about that. But what inspired me to write the book was, was Grant, actually. Um, he, had, he, he, he thought that I had some information to impart on people. And when I first spoke at 10X Growth Con the first time, uh, when I didn't know what I was going to talk about, I thought, well, how do, how do I fit into this? Because Grant does everything with the business. And so entrepreneurial, how does it make sense that I speak at this thing about what? And then it was at that moment I realized, well, the only thing I know how to speak about is what I do, which is kind of run behind the scenes operations and how Grant and I interact and how we were able to build this empire together. So that was the impetus and where I discovered that my content is desirable to other people because previously to that, I had sort of taken it for granted or not really understood that other people weren't doing what we were doing. And so when I heard the feedback from the first growth con and then how much people wanted to know more and how do I get on the same page with my partner and how do I build and how do I do this? Then the content really grew out of that because I realized the, the demand was there and that my content was, was equally value valuable in a different way. So that was really the birth of the book. When Grant um, said, you really need to put this book out there, your information is, is valuable and, yeah. and you're being greedy <laughs> if you hold it all to yourself. Well, that's, uh, that's very nice of him. And, and again, was that first time you went on stage 18, 2018, or was that 17? Uh, let's see. No, uh, 17, 18, 19, 20. No, it would have had, it would have had to have been in 16. Because oh, 16. Okay. 20 this year was our fourth growth con. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Cause yeah, I think, and I think he's right. I think, um, you know, I talk to a lot of folks uh, in the investing space and it's, it's most of the time it is a couple, right? Whether it's husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, 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 boyfriend, whatever. Right. Um, they all play different roles and very often one person is more in than the other, if you will. Right. I want to go all in on real estate investing. Oh, I'm nervous. My, my father or my mother lost something in the great crash or my brother tried and it didn't work. And you really do have to have that togetherness because if it, if you let real estate investing be a thorn in your side and you're not communicating, um, man, the problems can just fester, right? Yeah, they really can. And, and we're really, um, uh we're really great in the sense that we do operate and think very similarly and we're on the same page. Real estate is our favorite asset that we have. Um, I, I love real estate. I love our multifamily properties. I love the families that we cater to and whatnot. Um, but again, you know, one of the reasons why we're able to do what we do so well is because we have divided who does what in our relationship based on our roles and our strengths. And, and because Grant really is an expert in the area, I have been able to trust him to run that whole department. So he won't have to ask me, what do you think? Should I buy such and such a building? Even though he does ask me that and does ask me my opinion because I have a different perspective on things. Yeah. And, and that is a way that I can contribute to him by being a soundboard and, and giving my opinion. But at the end of the day, the decision is always his to make because 
we have delegated that he runs that department. Yeah. And what makes our relationship so special is that we do trust each other to operate efficiently and competently in our roles and not make mistakes. Yeah. Unfortunately, he doesn't make mistakes. So, um, so yeah, I understand the, the difficulties that other couples have, especially when some person might not understand and is getting wrong or bad information from another family member or mm -hmm. bad experience um, from lack of data or lack of experience. It's, 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 it can be really taxing on a relationship. Yeah, and really what I was hoping we could talk about it, and it's hard for both of us, right? We're both financially free at this point, um, so we can give back. The one thing that I always try to go to is if we had to start over again, let's just say this was our first, our first crash, right? Grant was involved in the last crash, as was I before that and all that. But let's just pretend you're a couple now, right? Maybe you have your two daughters, maybe you don't, whatever you want to choose, but you're going to start investing in real estate, multifamily, whatever your asset of choice is. How do you have those initial discussions? Because most people have that when they're working full time in some other career, whether you were being an actress before he was, you know, doing motivation or courses, just talk about how do you do that up front? And in your book, you talk about envision, create and defend, but maybe let's talk about envision up front. How can you have that discussion, right? You're stay at home. You're having dinner together again. How do you, how do you do that? Cause it sounds, frankly, it sounds easy and I know it's not, but how can you paint that picture for someone? You mean paint the picture of how we could um, make sense of an investment? Like no, a no it's, it's actually before that, right? Have that discussion, right? You have, the, you have the I'm an employee mindset and now you see real estate investing is going on sale and you want to take advantage of this collapse. How do you just begin to have that discussion, create roles and responsibilities? Really, how do you have that initial vision for what the empire could be, right? You're still drawing that bigger vision but you're like at day zero. That's, that's kind of where I want to paint the vision for folks. Well, the thing, the three things that uh, I only need to know about money and the only things I do know about money, but okay. it's the most important thing to know about money is number one, you have to know how to earn money. Okay. Number two, you have to know how to store money. And number three, you have to learn how to multiply money. And most people don't know how to do number three, which is ah. have money multiply and work for you even when you're not working. So the conversation would look like, um, you know, with 30 million people being unemployed right now, how do we protect our asset if that's what you are having in the bank right now that is literally going to zero? Mm. Um, money is not earning any money in a bank, not like when our parents were, um, saying save your money, mm -hmm. save your money or whatever they were saying because the banks were actually paying money back then. They're not, it's zero. Mm. So the, the conversation to be had was how do we get our money working for us where we don't have to work? If our business gets shut down today, which it has, I am not even allowed to go to my building. Um, how do we provide for our family in yeah. these economic situations? And that's why you would do something like uh, a multifamily investment because it continues to pay us. Um, we have really good and a really amazing asset class. Our tenants um, are paying. We're at one of the highest renewal rates. As soon as this thing happened, we were boots on the ground at every one of our properties and put incentives into place to you know, make that advance payment and secure a long-term um, lease, et cetera. So yeah. we're very smart about it. And it's, it's the thing that got us through the last economic collapse in 2008. Grant lost his business as he knew it back then. Right. And he was uh, decided and made a decision back then that he was never going to let an economy um, control his, 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 his wealth right. ever again. And that's when we went into multifamily. It's what saved us back then. So it's, it's what's going to definitely be our saving grace this time as well, even though there's an apparency of a little contraction, yeah. you know, for a brief period of time, I know the explosion on the other end. So the vision is, is really just being able to sit down with 
the person that you're discussing this with and really getting data and actual hatting on, well, how do I make this investment? Are we going to buy a property um, of 16 units, 32 units? How do we fund it? Do we go into an investment like we already have, like Cardone Capital or, you know, but, but those are conversations that need to be had based on two people having a vision, which means going into the future, mm -hmm. either looking at what is the best case scenario and working your way backwards, or what is the worst case scenario mm -hmm. and working your way backwards into figuring out, well, how do I plan for the future so that I can um, create my future rather than kind of go by the wind, be effective, everything, and not really know how it's going to turn out. Yeah. I love so that approach. Have, those, those three things the, the, the conversation really is about, uh, how to, how to multiply or, 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 or multiple, uh, your money. That's, uh, I love the simplicity. That's very well said. Not enough people talk about that. It's always, it's always, what's my W2 look like, or maybe what's in my savings or in my, you know, stock market account. And that's kind of where it stops. Nobody has a discussion about how do we multiply together. So we have options in the future. I, I, I like that. That's, that's very nicely done. Um, one of the most things. Are, yeah, ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, most people are financially illiterate. So, you know, and, and, and they've only been taught what's been passed down to them by, yeah, by their parents who probably aren't the ones that have the authority. <laughs> financial wealth in most cases. I mean, real financial stability yeah. and wealth. Yeah. Yeah. So true. One of the things that I just wanted to ask you about, I don't know if this is like legend in YouTube world or just spread out there, who knows? Uh, but I believe you get credit. Elena Cardone gets credit for creating the billion dollar goal uh, for Grant at some point, right? Mm -hmm. And um, thinking bigger, right? Playing too small, I think may have been used in that time or not, or maybe used elsewhere and I put it together. But I think that's I think that's amazing that, you know, his partner yourself said basically, Grant, you're thinking too small. When by any stretch, he was, you know, everybody would argue already very successful. So, was that just a light bulb moment, or how does that come to you that that you can you can think that's just awesome? I just don't. I, it I don't was know. it was a, it was multiple reasons, and yeah, he was hecta millionaire at that time. So right. it was an outrageous thing to 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 put on him and, and especially in the manner in which I did, which wasn't <laughs> thought through in my mind. Cause I was, you need to become a billionaire, but it kind of blurted out of my mind for a number of different reasons. Um, one, I had met billionaires, a handful of them, oh. and they were quite a disappointment. I was expecting them to sort of mentor me or know more mm. than me or be more helpful than I thought they were going to help. I put an expectation on them to, to, to help and they didn't and i was disappointed and um also i started looking at these billionaires and how they became billionaires and then if you, you really look at it every single corporation that's on the forbes list has a product or a service that goes out to the masses mm -hmm. and they exchange with the masses in order to receive the billions mm -hmm. and so i'm grant's biggest fan and i believe his products and services need to go out into the world because Grant is an amazing guy. He can change the bottom line and families and communities and, and the world by his data and his knowledge. And I wanted to solve the problem for financial illiteracy. I, I wanted him, he could bring financial literacy to, um, to the world. And so I started thinking really big on, on that biggest scale. And I thought, you know what, these billionaires are no better than Grant. As a matter of fact, Grant's better than, than them. So why is he not playing on the world stage? He deserves to be there more than them. Plus, if he goes there, you know, I want him to bring all of the people just like me who never went to college, who ended high school at 17. And I feel comfortable around me, people like me, not those people. I felt very uncomfortable with those people, actually. And so that's where it blurted out initially yeah. was that I believed in his product enough. Secondly, being a smart, intelligent, powerful woman married to such um, an incredibly challenging, difficult uh, <laughs> man, not that it's not rewarding, but it is extremely challenging. I also understand that if a man of that magnitude is not operating at 
his full potential or at least trying to reach for his full potential, that man will unleash all of that energy on me and I become the target. Uh. And so when I had the epiphany one day, if I put his targets on the real thing and the main thing, which are his goals, which which is with purpose, with helping people and himself. And, and if I help align him and help him reach his height and success, then a lot of that negative, aggressive <laughs> energy would come off of me and get yeah. redirected onto that. And so that was purely my greedy <laughs> gr uh, side of it. Um, but the other most main senior is that I, I really, I really feel like he, he can help people on a massive level and to, to, to not be doing that would be greedy of him. Ah, there you go. I like it. I know Grant has talked about many times of, of getting to getting to know six or seven billion people knowing Grant. I saw today in my little read up on you, you have the same goal for yourself, which I applaud you on. Um, you know, does that, how, 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 I mean, I can't even fathom that. Right? I once had a sales goal of a billion dollars in a, a software company I ran and it was like, oh my God, how do you do that? I mean, how can you sit there and think about, that's just, a, that's, that goal is so large. I mean, how does that not just keep you up at night? I'm, I'm just curious. It does. It oh, keeps, good. Oh, good. <laughs> me up at night. Um, I think it's it's an impossible goal, and it's exactly what we need. We need impossible goals to keep us focused, to I keep like us um, fortified, to keep us fighting on the same page instead of fighting each other. It um, it makes me focus when I'm tempted to do loaf time or ah. um, it just repurposes me because I know that if I want to achieve that goal, um, then the time is running out and I need to get to work. And, yeah. and, and for people like me and people like Grant, work is a good thing. I don't get tired of it. You know, I don't need a break from it. It's not work that I need a break from. Um, sometimes it's, it's um, people twisting what I say and having to um, measure everything I say because this person's going to interpret it this way. This that's what's exhausting to me. But yeah. my, my my work and my purpose and my passion is not ever something I I tire from or need a break from. It's actually the thing that ignites me, gives me more energy, and really truly does make me happy when I'm producing and I'm in production and I'm accomplishing things and I'm achieving my goals. Is when I'm the most happy, invigorated, and nice person. Honestly. <laughs> Well, I love that. I'm, I'm, I am thankful that that goal keeps you awake at night. I was, I was a little worried it didn't. That's a big number. Um, I, I want to switch. Yeah, I want to switch to your daughters. Right, you're a very strong woman. Grant's a force of nature, uh, but you have two young girls uh, that are watching you right now, and, and we're going through an event that we didn't experience as kids. Um, you know, maybe our great great grandparents did uh, something similar to the, the depression, just just different. Not not comparing economies, just a different world. How are you making sure they stay, they understand what's going on, but also stay positive? Um, because I, you know, uh, I just think that's something people need to hear. Um, you know, I think it's, I think kids are vital. Me too. And I've really taken this opportunity to become a better, better mother. Um, I've been using this, uh, entire pandemic to figure out how to better myself, how to come out of this on the other side. I've, I've gone into the future. I, I practice what I preach. I, I'm a visionary and I've come back saying, well, if I want to be this person in the future, that's going to be bigger, badder, stronger, more unstoppable. Who do I have to become today? And how do I work on myself and take the steps necessary in order to be my future self? Mm. And so I've looked at this as an opportunity to put in more time with my kids, which has meant uh, the sacrifice of deadlines with some work things that, you know, that bugs me on another side of things, mm -hmm. but the rewards of putting in the extra time and, 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 and trying to practice patience and talking to them and coming up with plans and things we can do together. And we bake so many cakes, but they love, it, you know, our, our projects. And, and, and now we got kittens. I brought kittens I into that. the home, which, but, but it was, 
it's not something I ever wanted to do, which was to have pets. We travel a lot. It's, mm. it's, it's a lot of work. We, we live in a condo. There's no outside, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, when, when you give kids a purpose, um, then they have a purpose. Yeah. And it's really important for this time to give kids a purpose so they don't feel like they're just at effect of things. Yeah. So I felt if the time was ever going to come to get a pet, it is now. It's given them a, perf uh, a purpose. They have to take the, the kittens to the litter box. They're feeding it with a bottle. They're waking nice. up all hours of the night. It's it's been incredible because it's been a, a very big distraction for them and something uh -huh. that they have to take care of. And, and so it's important, but if you do, you don't have cats or pets before then I was trying to figure out creative ways so they could feel in control of something. So I gave Scarlett the responsibility of wiping down and cleaning all the handles in the house hmm. and, and, you know, and then Sabrina became the baker and Scarlett was in charge of entertainment hour. So I gave them projects and um, roles that they got to be responsible for. And we held family meetings once a week to discuss what was going on and who needs what help where. And, and, and it's, and it's something that we didn't do before this that hmm. I want to keep in that is important. And, you know, I had taken Sabrina's phone away from her. She, you know, it's just inappropriate. I couldn't watch everything that was occurring. <laughs> I was seeing some negative side effects. So I yeah. took the phone away at the family meeting. It was brought up, you know, that she feels disconnected from her friends. Had we not had the family meeting, I wouldn't have known that. So now every day at a certain period of time, she gets her phone back. She can FaceTime her friends. She feels connected. Hmm no harm, no foul, but you see, so there's really been an effort to keep them included, to keep them doing things and putting them in charge of projects and making sure that they know they're part of Team Cardone and they want to do their, create their YouTube channel and come up with 10X Kids videos. So they, it gets them in the, in the mode of creating and how they can um, also help us prepare during this time by contributing so yeah so it's really been a good thing it's that's, really it really has for them they are they i think they're happier now honestly <laughs> wow that's saying something that's that's i mean frankly as a parent that's what you would hope for right that they're happier now yeah yeah that's pretty cool yeah you know it, it doesn't seem to have affected them that much my kids were already homeschooled so rather than the tutor come over the tutors online now it's not that big of a difference yeah so um so they've made the adjustment quite well yeah one of the one of the most powerful videos i've ever seen come out of um on your youtube channel the, the cardone youtube channel which uh, i believe it was your oldest daughter uh, speaking at the growth con in i think it was miami the one in front of twenty thousand mm -hmm. or thirty thousand, whoever yeah. it was people yeah that yeah. was I mean, I, I've, I've spoken in front of crowds of five or 10,000 people before. And to do that as a, I don't know what it was, eight, nine, 10 year old. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine that's something she's going to always carry with her. She'll she never was forget eight, that. And the other one was six. Oh my God. But they also, they speak every year. So they spoke just this last year too. Yeah. And they do write their own speeches and Grant does help them or goes over it with them a little bit here and there but that is um completely what they want to do and every single year i am blown away with uh with yeah. their delivery with yeah. their poise with their confidence they're very secure it's just i mean and i'm such a proud mother it's it really be. an accomplishment yeah yeah you should be i mean that was as an eight-year-old i mean there are there are 28 year olds that couldn't do what what she did on stage and delivery yeah. and timing and pause. And she has, I, she has your presence in front of a camera, I guess. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's God given. I think she, she was fantastic. So congratulations on that. Uh, I want to go back to your book. I know you're short on time. Um, you know, I think again, build an empire, how to have it all is written for the perfect time. Uh, I think it actually should be shared as a couple, husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, did you write it with that intention? Um, again, I think it's, it's something people have to go get today. Uh, it has to start discussions today because it really can have a positive impact on their future. Thank you for that. 
And the book was really written um, for anyone that wants to start an empire. And, and I opened the book with explaining what an empire is. And it's mm -hmm. a system. I literally quote the book, a system, a way of living that sets your purpose, morals, goals, and values at the highest possible levels. And so it is, it's a structured system that gets you building and expanding even through contractions. Yeah. And, um, and so obviously while I wrote the book, I wrote the book in addition to the person that just wants to understand the basic foundation of what is an empire how do I think in terms of an empire why do I have to think in terms of empire that big why that much abundance but all ultimately yes it was written for couples to figure out how to think like that together how to figure out who does what how to start working on strengths and weaknesses and not male, female, but yep. really figure out how to um, achieve heightened levels of success together. That's what I'm interested in. I wanted to fast track couples to get to heightened levels of success. I believe the most um, significant way to prove or to show your love for somebody is by helping them achieve their goals. It isn't by turning off the TV and proving that you love me by not checking your phone and we're going to watch Netflix for an hour. That might do it for somebody else, but not for me. That's very temporary. When you help me achieve a goal that I've had and I have that sense of what that's given me in terms of confidence, um, power, grit, all that it took to achieve that, that's, that's something that can never be taken away from you. That's, that's, that's a reward that I'm so grateful to receive. And that's what I want to help couples achieve together. I want to help them achieve real victories and real goals that achieve and create more love and more fortification yeah. and the expanding of a bigger empire together. So, yeah. So it, yeah, it was kind of written for everyone, but my, my couples were definitely, I definitely wrote yeah. it for them. That's, that's what I seen. And listen, one of the things that I'm really glad you put in it is you added the defend, right? It's always nice to envision and create and, oh, rosy picture, rosy picture. But you know, you put in defend and that's important. Right. There are a lot of people in your personal network that probably shouldn't be there when you're starting out. They're just detractors. Right. They're just draining your energy and they're just negative forces. And then as you have growth, it sometimes just the darts come out even more. Right. You, oh, my God, you're 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 more successful than me. You're pulling away and I don't want you to do that. And, you know, I just love the fact that you added defend uh, and you tried to stay tight as a unit. So that that was a nice addition. Well, if you really um, thank you again for that, if. But I was going to say, um, I specifically designed the cover of the book, and I'm glad you got that, the defend part. Yeah. The cover of the book, if you really look at it, I have a shield in there, <laughs> I have weapons, and I have a lot of blood and dead bodies at the bottom because, because it is not all roses. And yeah. um, that's how it looks. I understand that's how it looks on social media some of the hardest parts and sacrifice phase that we went through, there was no social media, so you didn't see it. Yeah. Um, but it's not to say that what I experience now is any less than then. I just can't expose everything. I can't. I try, I try to be very transparent, but I also don't give credibility to enemies because I cut them off. I don't flow on power. And if I address them, I'm flowing them power and I give them light. And yeah. that's not one of my tactics. So I, I, you have to defend. It's very real. The higher you get in your empire, the more you will try to be attacked, the more you have to be ethical, the more you have to be able to observe and agnose and be able to detect red flags and, and not go by what people say, but by their actions. You have to even be more alert. There is, um, but it's all worth it. It's all worth it in the end. But yes, people, it doesn't just go away now that we've hit some certain point. Like there are, there are people that want to kill me off. Oh, there yeah. are people that want to kill Grant off. There are haters out there that would love to see us split up and divorce. That would make them very happy. So oh, there's terrible. that element. No, 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 no. But it, it's real. Yeah. Like yeah, sure. you have to, when you, when you run an empire, you have to confront mm. that evil exists. 
if you can't confront that, you will, you, you will never build an empire because you will get slaughtered. Yep. So you have to confront that evil people exist. Evil people exist even within your empire. And those are the ones that can take it down because you oh, yeah. let them, let them come into the inside. And they're the ones that poison the well. Absolutely. So I don't know if you know the story, but you know, back in the day, there was always an, an, a, a traitor and on uh, uh, um, and a turncoat, uh, and what they would do is they would pose as one of the soldiers, or you would think that they were on your side, and they would poison the well. Yep. The, the forces drank out of the well, and they would get so sick that they couldn't fight in in battle, and then the other side would, of course, win. So. Yep. That's where the saying poison the well comes from. And, and, and you really have to know what you're looking for and who to let in and you have to protect yourself yeah. um, and defend it. And, and it doesn't go away just because, oh, everything's great now. You reached a certain oh, level. Yeah. You, are, you are now running uh, over a billion dollar business. Everything's gonna be great now. No, now it's like 10 times. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So again, I love the fact that defend is in there because you have to do it no matter what size starting out getting success, you know, at somebody else's peak. And again, you're right to turn coat poisoning the well, all things you have to watch out for. So as we wrap this up, Elena, what can people look for from you going forward? You're doing such amazing things, right? Your Instagram account, YouTube, you're all over, but what is Elena's, you know, how are you going to get to 7 billion people? I mean, just, just curious where you're going next. Well, that's a damn good question. <laughs> I'm taking my steps, my plan. But, um, you know, I, again, I've really used this quarantine as a time um, to really assess my future and how to expand and build during this time, even though the apparency is that it might not be growing. Hmm. But I'm doing the groundwork now because who I see on the other side of this, where Elena goes is not only do I, my goals, I want to restore the family dynamic, but I want to restore the value of women in society. Mm. So I found that newfound purpose for myself. I now want to, in the future, create sort of a 10X growth con type scenario, but I want it to be called the Women's International Congress, nice. where it'll be women from around the globe that come in and really work to everything underneath the banner of how to restore the value of women in society with those women coming in to hear from other powerful women that then go out into the world and make their family life better, make themselves better, live up to their potential, uh, exchange their goods and services with the world to make it a better place, then they, those people are all working under my mission, which is I want to restore the value of women in society. So that's awesome. I have big goals. I have big dreams. I want to start a big women's movement, not to negate any of my men. I love my men out there. I want them to be with extraordinary women. I want them to hit and achieve all their goals, but I really want to create a women's movement and, um, and everything that I'm doing right now is going in that direction, as well as maintaining and supporting Grant Cardone, the Cardone Enterprises, um, even though that is his content and he's worked very hard and he is brilliant. So I want to continue to uphold my role in that support system because that is sure. equally valuable on the other side and hopefully my women can come in through me who might not necessarily yeah. um, find Grant because of who he is. Um, but I don't want my ladies to be cut off from his information. So if I can be a conduit to l help them be better because of his material, yeah. I want to open that gate as well. So, um, well, you, you, so that's uh, my no, I think, I think it is so awesome. There, there are people out there that don't have to work this hard, work this hard. You're very talented. Again, you're, I think it's the quote I heard about you is an unstoppable force. Uh, I think you are an unstoppable that. force of goodness. That's what I just wanted to add, that little goodness to it. I just want to thank you for this. Uh, I know you're very busy. You have a wonderful evening uh, and thank you for all you do. Oh, thank you so much for that acknowledgement. I really appreciate you. And thank you so much for having me on your show today. You got it.